Hey everybody, my name is Joe Pivarunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm that covers disruptive tech for a broad audience of retail and institutional investors across the globe. Today, we're gonna to talk about four AI drug discovery stocks that are on sale at 50% off. And by that, we mean they're literally at least 50% off. So the last time we looked at these four companies was in September of 2021. At the top of the list, Exciencia, they only had their IPO about a month after we published our piece. So we've used that starting point. So the market cap for each of these firms since September of 2021, with the exception of the top one, they've all fallen by at least 50%. Now, lots of tech stocks have been overpriced. So just because a stock price falls doesn't mean the company's fairly valued. In order to determine uh, valuation, one of the things that we look at is called a simple valuation ratio. So we take market capitalization and we divide that by annualized revenues, the latter being last quarter times four. So we've done that here with Schrodinger. Their market cap of uh, 2.2 billion divided by 185 million in revenues, that's last quarter times four, we get the number 12. Well, what does that mean? First of all, we have a number, that internal number we use, 40, that says we don't invest in companies with a valuation ratio higher than 40. Now, the number doesn't really matter. What's important is that you have a cutoff to say, and a, a method in place to say, I won't pay a certain price that exceeds the valuation that I've decided upon. So what we can do then as well is look at comparative valuation. So using that same method, this is taken from our tech stock catalog, which has over 400 different tech stocks in it. We've just filtered on some life sciences companies here and calculated the valuation ratio. So remember Schrodinger was 12. Well, here are the ratios for some other popular companies. So that ratio is valuable but it doesn't work when you have a company like you see here on the right. This is Abcellera. Their quarterly revenue flow is unpredictable and sporadic. So our valuation ratio doesn't work very well for them. On the other hand, on the left-hand side, you see here Schrodinger and their annual revenues. You can see nice steady growth and their quarterly revenues, steady growth as well. So this valuation works well for companies like Schrodinger, not so well for companies like Abcellera. Now, another valuation method that we can use is to look at, since these are all relatively recent IPOs, we can look at the date of the IPO, the price that institutional investors paid, and today's price. So you can see that using that metric, all of these companies are trading at a discount. So Let's take Recursion. Recursion had their IPO last April, April of last year. Institutional investors at the time were willing to pay $18 a share. Today's price is $7.09. That's a 61% discount. So we're also able to tell that not too long ago, if sophisticated institutional investors paid a particular price, then today's price, we can compare the two and see what sort of discount that they're trading at. So um, we can also take that a step further and we'll use recursion pharmaceuticals as an example. So they raised a series D round of 234 million in September of 2020. That's uh, with Bayer as the lead, one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world who thought the valuation of the company at that time when they invested pre-IPO was a billion dollars. Well, today, recursion is valued at $1.2 billion. So you're only paying a 20% premium over what Bayer did 1.5 years ago and 61% less than the $18 a share they priced their IPO at. So just because share prices fall, you know, there's this notion of catching a falling knife, right? We wanna make sure that we have some benchmark that we can use to determine what a fair price to pay is for a company and looking at what institutional investors pay is one method of doing that. Now, today we're gonna to talk a little bit more about recursion of the four companies we've discussed. We really like recursion and this was a comment from our last piece. We like the sheer breadth of compounds they're exploring, their relationship with Bayer 
and the large amount of data that's growing at an exponential rate. And we'll put in the description of this video a link to the research piece that looks at how really cool stuff they're doing. So they actually look at cells and see how they react using imaging. It's fascinating stuff. And the amount of data that they have is growing at an exponential rate. The price of experiments is dropping. This is a fascinating company, but we don't invest in stories. We invest in companies with revenue. Now, the value proposition for recursion is that they're able to identify failures earlier in the research cycle. So less than 10% of drugs make it through the FDA drug discovery gauntlet. What they're proposing is that using their platform, they're able to identify failures early on and increase the success rate of drugs flowing through their pipeline. And they have quite a big pipeline. So they say they have one of the largest, broadest, and deepest pipelines of any um, technology-enabled drug discovery company. And they've offered up here some comparison examples, uh, Schrodinger being one of those, and they have more than 50 drugs in their pipeline. Now, Recursion eats their own dog food and will only make meaningful revenues when they can progress drugs through their pipeline. Now, recently, shares of Recursion plummeted based on some updated guidance they gave around the four leading drugs. So they may have 50 drugs in their pipeline, but there are four to watch. These are the ones that will see revenue the soonest, presumably. And the bad news was around the fourth drug on this list here. You can see the top four there, the one at the bottom. Uh, we're not even going to try to say these names, but that particular compound they said would have a delayed phase two trial start by two years. That's a pretty big delay. Moving up, the next compound, they expect to enroll the first phase two patient in either Q2 or Q3 this year because of the Rona. And then moving up from there, they have a phase two trial enrolling the first patient in the coming weeks. And then at the top, a phase two on track to enroll in the second quarter of this year. So all eyes are on these compounds that will eventually lead to the company starting to realize meaningful revenues. Now, here's our thought process. We've covered recursion a number of times and had nothing but good things to say about the company, but we don't believe that it's a good time to invest. And we wanted to share our thought process as to why. And it's certainly very tempting. You see that, you know, the valuation, you're not paying much from what Bayer paid not too long ago. It's very compelling and it's very tempting. So we wanted to talk that through. So first of all, let's assume their platform works as expected. So let's say they can predict successful drugs half the time compared to the industry success rate of less than 10%. Okay, let's assume that's true. Then if that's the case, half their pipeline drugs will eventually be commercialized, right? So 24 of the 48. Now, that's based on the 50 drugs they have in their pipeline right now. So when they first successfully commercialize a drug or a drug passes through phase three and is about to be commercialized, that will represent a point in time when they've realized 1 25th of the company's potential based on today's pipeline. So we could simply wait for one drug to clear clinical trials and validate the platform. Now, sure, the price will soar around that time and there'll be a lot of volatility. That's fine. We can wait for that point in time. We may pay a premium, but we wait for that point in time, wait for the dust to settle and invest then. By doing so, we've eliminated a great deal of risk before revenues start flowing in. Because guess what? If they're able to commercialize you know, a 50% success rate, they're flip the coin on whether or not uh, they're going to have the next announcement is a failure that will send the price of the stock even lower. So in order to invest in this company with some confidence, it would be great to see a success story, wait until that simmers down a bit, and then make your move there. So that's kind of our thought process. It's quite tempting to move into a position and to break our rule, which is to say that we don't invest in companies without meaningful revenues. Well, that pretty much it poses a big problem for drug discovery companies that will only realize success when drugs are commercialized. Now, if you're investing in a drug discovery company and you have a bunch to select from, probably best to choose the one with the most candidates in their pipeline because that gives you the most shots at success, right? It's a simple math. So when we look at recursion, this was a 
chart we came across doing research for this video that's quite interesting. So you can see some of the other names. Now, you notice in the bottom left-hand side here, it says recursion engaged Frost and Sullivan to perform the analysis. So a bit of a conflict of interest there, but at least they've made that clear. And many of the names on this list we've talked to, some of these companies we've literally talked to. So I was down in San Francisco speaking with Andrew Radin of 2XAR a few years back, maybe more, and he helped me understand this whole domain so that we could publish some of the great pieces we have on these companies. You have Schrodinger here. Um, Schrodinger doesn't like to be called an AI company anymore, never mind the fact that their last 10, 10K contains 31 mentions of the phrase machine learning. They let us know that they, they're not an AI company. So we acknowledge that they're a physics-based computational platform and not an AI company, but uh, they've been put on here in this analysis, which is quite interesting. And recursion, of course, puts themselves in the upper right-hand corner. We thought this was uh, an interesting, at least a framework to look at these various companies. You have Benevolent. They're planning to have a SPAC, uh, which is which kind of sucks. All the companies that we're talking about today, the four, they've all had IPOs using the traditional process and should be applauded for that. We're not big fans of the, of the SPAC vehicle as our uh, regular readers know. And then for the rest of these, Insilico is said to have confidentially filed for an IPO as well. So this was uh, worth uh, taking a look at. Just to conclude, the four drug discovery stocks we've talked about today are trading at a discount based on two methods. One, how much they've fallen in the past six months, and two, what institutional investors paid at the time of their IPOs. For investors with an appetite for risk, you don't have to wait for recursion to have their first success story. You could use their uh, bad, the recent bad news as an opportunity to start adding to a position and know that you're paying not much more of a premium than what Bayer did when they led the Series D of 234 million uh, a few years back. So as the market pundits who add no value always say, make sure you proceed with cautious optimism. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments section of this video. The associated research pieces that helped produce this video will also be in the description. And make sure you subscribe to our channel as we'll be putting out a lot more content in the future. Thank you very much for your time.